Hi and welcome. Uh, this is Cousin Russ. I thought I would take a minute to take a, a, give a tour of my Family Tree Maker user blog. Uh, blogs are were set up to, as from what I have seen to be a, an online journal. Well, I thought I would take a chance and see if I couldn't expand that to try to help uh, share my experience with the Family Tree Maker program. So about 19 or 2008, I decided that I would start to blog about the Family Tree Maker program because I did a lot of online help and we're helping people out and I would get the same questions asked and not have to answer them the same way. So I thought I would dip my toes into blogging. Thanks to my cousin, Dear Myrtle, I got into it and I uh, have been doing it ever since. And this blog that I'm using, that I'm showing, has about 500, uh, over 500 blog posts that I have made available. So what I'm trying to do, what I want to do is talk about how, how to navigate on this blog. Uh, the most recent post is always at the top. I don't have control over that. And I did a video, um, I guess it was earlier today, and I put it there. And what I've been trying to do on the videos is try to put the title in the video so I know what I'm looking at. On the left-hand side, you, there's a search box. There's a place where you can get email notifications when I put a blog post up. If you put your email address in here and you click submit, uh, you will get an email anytime I do a blog post. Or you can uh, subscribe through an RSS feed, whatever your RSS feed, and that's a technical term which I'm not sure that I can explain, but it's a way to get stuff uh, sent to you automatically. You also can subscribe to any comments that are made to the blog post. And as I scroll down, some of the blog posts, especially the written blog posts, are long, like the one that's in the right-hand side now. It's a, no, that's actually, it is long, and but there's a lot of detail in it. So the length of the blog post uh, depends on what I'm trying to talk about. And every once in a while, I'll throw in the video like was at the top. But that's what's down the right-hand side. And so you can read it. And I don't have control over what is at the top. The most recent blog post that I put is at the top. Now, while we're at the top of this screen, what I did do was I had to figure out a way to get the various versions of Family Tree Maker because I do blog posts based on the most recent current version of Family Tree Maker. So I have 2014, which is the one I do now most of the time. There's 2012, and then I put training resources. And I want these very close to the top and to catch your eye early. And I will, the reason why I'm talking about it because I want to tell you what, how I manage all of these articles. Uh, there's a 2011 and 2010. I also have 2009 and 8 in the blog. I have not taken them down. They're still there. I just don't have them as a tab at the top. And there's a reason for that and a way that I get around it, which is down the left-hand side of the screen. Now, the blog archive uh, is done by month. Now, when you open it up normally, when you land here on the home page, and that's this home right here, when you come in at home, down the left-hand side, and I shouldn't have done that, but that's okay, I did, because uh, it'll take a bit for the screen to populate. The most recent blog post is at the top and it'll be the title that I have put on it. And in April, there's a bunch of blogs, posts, and 
2012 or 2013, I did 100 blog posts, and you can see by year how many blog posts that I did. And every time it refreshes, is uh, is why the screen is going the way it is. Um, let me click back on the home link. What this article is was something that I did in. I must have clicked on the wrong menu, which I did. <laughs> so uh, the the archive version of the blog post are done by year. Now, uh, and that's okay. Uh, it's good for me, but what about you? I I think it's very important. I have thought that it's very important that you know where to get help. So what I have done is under the archives, I put where to get help. And actually, I put it the help in two places. But this is right up front, and there's links to go to the online help center, which is right there, and some work communities and message boards. I have those links here. and. Um, then I have a list of people who join or want to get a notification when I do a blog post and you can certainly join uh, here by clicking there and you can join to get the email um, when I do a blog post. Now my Google Plus badge is here. Um, that's, it just happens to be there because uh, it let people know that I am on Google Plus. Um, now the labels. This this may be helpful for you. Now I don't have I figured out how to make the labels meaningful in the main and the way that I do that is is when I create a blog post I put a label on it so that it, common information can be put together and it's done in alphabetical order that it's an alphabetical sort now while we're here you will see here are the labels so this blog post that's just above it was using version two, family tree maker 2012 and I do the blog post by version and then workspace within Family Tree Maker. Those, that's the menu across the top of Family Tree Maker, and then what other categories or sub pieces of the program that we're talking about? And I'm going to scroll down here a little bit more, and I'm going to get down to version 2014 because that's the, the current version. So I have 125 articles on Family Tree Maker 2014. Five of them are about the features, how to deal with file. Now, fi file is one of the menu items that's uh, just below the workspace. File backup, so it's version 2014, the file menu, and the choice within that menu. Help menu, uh, the icons. I did an article on what the icons mean, so if I talk about the workspace and you'll see the, what the icons are in Family Tree Maker and what they mean. Then I get down to the uh, media and this again this is all alphabetical. There is the people workspace. In the people workspace you can do a branch, you can customize the view, you can do a name. This is all within the people menu. Then we go down to places, the places workspace, how to resolve a place name. What do you do when you see an unresolved, unresolved place names? These are all program features, and it's alphabetical by workspace. Now, I did the upper and lower case so that it made sense, at least to me, but I didn't put spaces in it, and I did that so I could be consistent, so it would sort correctly. Now, I'm going to go up to, let me just say this one more time, that the labels are at the bottom of uh, the blog post, and they will be over here. Now, I'm going to go up to the top again, the top of the, the blog, 
and I want to go to 2014. Now, that's a long list of stuff down the left-hand side. So what I have done is created categories. And you just saw that demonstrated. So all the art, what I do on this page is all anything that has FTM 2014 or in the subject, it might be 2014 or like here, FTM 2014, FTM 2014. I then do the blog posts by workspace, but this time I spell it out. So this is the plan workspace. When you go into Family Tree Maker, the first workspace that you see is the plan workspace. Then the next level down in the plan workspace, these are the things that I work I talk about. So this is this is all the workspace. Any time that I post a do a blog post that has the label people export people name. When I do that, it automatically gets added to this. If I click on this, which I won't, if I click on it, it will give me a list of all the articles that I've talked about people name. So each of the workspaces is done that way and including the menu bar and I keep going down because there's a couple specific articles that seem to be important opening existing 2012 with 2014 so that link will take you right to that article because it was a, a problem at early on when people first transitioned from 2012 to 2014. 2012 is just like that. I format may be a little bit different, but the other thing that's important to know that if there's no difference between 2012 and 2014 feature wise, they may I may not have duplicated them yet. So if it, the program works the same in both, I may not have done a specific blog post yet in 2014. And I'll tell you how I get my topics here in a second. The most important tab for me is the training resources. Now I keep this up to date. Matter of fact, I put a link to my community on Google Plus right at the top because it's new, and I want to update this to create a library of all the YouTube videos that I are in the blog. But I'm going to put a link to them here. So I just talk about that. There's webinars that are available, uh, the stuff that Family Tree Maker has put online, and this is from their playlist. So anytime Ancestry.com updates, it puts a new Family Tree Maker labeled uh, YouTube video, it's, and they put it on their playlist. Clicking here will take you to that playlist on YouTube. I don't have to do anything with it. If they add three new videos, which I believe they've done so in the past day or two, uh, you click here and it will pick them up. And I tend to have a tendency, as you can see, is put the most recent at the top. Uh, it was just what I thought was important. There's some tutorials, some quick guides, some tricks and tips. Oh, this is fun. Dear Myrtle and I had some time on her YouTube channel talking about some of the features that are in Family Tree Maker. She and I did it in dialogue, and she was doing the video before I started doing video. But these are some of the, there was a couple webinars that we did, and these are uh, conversations that Dear Myrtle and I had for her community and are on my community because we want to we serve this, the users. Um, so I have her videos on uh, links to her videos on my uh, right here in the training resources tab. 
there's some other videos, some other links to help places like uh, the uh, Family Tree Maker email list, the Ancestry.com blog. The I did a summary of the Ancestry.com YouTube channel. So these are specific items that I picked up. You get to the same list from the YouTube uh, playlist because when I did this, playlists weren't available to us. So all of that to say is that I have a lot. Anytime I see a training, some training resource for the Family Tree Maker, I put it here. If I'm going to scroll down a little bit because there was a um, Ben Sayer is a blogger, a family tree maker. His forte is on the Mac version. So a lot of he's got a great blog uh, at Genealogy Toolbox is the name of the blog. He and I did an interview, uh, a video interview a couple years ago. <clears throat> so he he blogs too. Um, but so uh, that's another training resource, and that's why I put it on this training resource tab. Um, now the other item that I'll point out, and that is this uh, search blog uh, window. Uh, so if you're searching for something, this is the place where you can put in a word. Don't try to put in a long this description of what you're searching for, use one word, census, citations, AMT, ancestry member tree. I will, if I say AMT, I'm talking about ancestry member tree. I try to use the term ancestry member tree at least once on that page or article. Um, family tree makers view of what is online is called an ancestry member tree. If you go to Ancestry.com and look at the same tree, it will appear as a public member tree. I, inter, I usually use the Ancestry member tree term because I'm mostly, if you watch this blog at all, read this blog, you will know that I do all of my work from within Family Tree Maker. Uh, so it's an Ancestry member tree. It's still up in the cloud. So. I hope that was helpful. I know it took me a long time to walk through it, but I thought I get enough questions that people don't know how to find things on my blog. So I wanted to take the time to talk about how I have set it up. And there's a search engine and I, and these tabs. I, I hope they're helpful to you. Again, uh, features between 2012 and 2014. I have focused on the new features in 2014 that were not in 2012. I do uh, do articles on 2014 that were also in 2012, and I usually will mention that. Now, how do I get articles for what I put on here? Well, uh, this video is based on a question that I had in a private email to me. Uh, but uh, yesterday I did one or two videos based on feedback that I had from Facebook. So if I see a problem that I can address, I will come and do a blog post. I am doing more and more videos, as you may be able to tell. I can do them quicker. I don't have to have my editor make sure that I spelled everything correct because I spelled terrible. Uh, so I'm trying to do my editor and save on the red ink a little bit here. Um, so it's it's easier for me to do and quicker and the technology is here to allow me to do that. Um, so I hope that's helpful. But if you do it, if you see a blog post that you have a question about it, please put your comments there because I do read them. I respond to them as quickly as I possibly can. Uh, that may be a day or two, but I try not to let it go that long. Uh, but uh, if you put a comment, a question about what I just said, 
please make that comment. I watch Facebook. I don't actively pursue, but I do try to help out. What is important is what version of Family Tree Maker are you using? There is no version 14. There is a version 2014. It's very important because when I started, it was version 3.4, 4.0, 4.5, 6.0, 7.0, 8.0, 9.0, 10.0, 11.0, 12.0, 13.0, 14.0, 15.0, 16.0, 17.0, 18.0, 19.0, 20.0, 21.0, 22.0, 23.0, 24.0, 25.0, 26.0, 27.0, 28.0, 29.0, 30.0, 31.0, 32.0, 33.0, 34.0, 35.0, 36.0, 37.0, 38.0, 39.0, 40.0, 41.0, 42.0, 43.0, 6.0, so there was all kinds of single digit versions and double digit versions. V version 8, 9, they stopped and made it uh, version 2005. There was no version 13, there was no version 10, there was no version 11. So the people that developed the program did a numbering change in how they numbered their version numbers. I need to know what version of Family Tree Maker you're using. It's also helpful, not important, but helpful to know what version your operating system is. <clears throat> now, I do not try to, I used to keep all versions of Family Tree Maker on the program, but uh, I only have version 2014 on my program because it's the best version, in my opinion, uh, that's been around. But I do know the previous versions. I have within my hand's reach documentation back to version 3.4. So I have the, and I've experienced, I work with all the versions so far, so I know how they work. I may be a little rusty on anything version 16, 2006 and earlier, I may be a little rusty on them, but I still know them. Uh, so please ask your questions. I hope this was helpful. And uh, uh, I, that's, that's it. Have a great day.